their jobs. A lot have been made redundant. A lot have been cut down in their hours and the amount of work that sought from them, which means that their uh, wealth and their income has also decreased. Now, this has caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, a lot of trouble in people's lives. We must turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must turn to Him with istighfar by seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah said in Surah Nuh in the Quran that the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, he said to his people, Istaghfiru rabbakum innahu kana ghaffara. Seek forgiveness from your Lord, indeed He is the oft forgiving. Yursilis sama'a alaykum midrara. And by means of that, Allah will send rain upon you. Wa yumdidkum bi amwalim wa baneen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you support in your wealth and in your children. Number two, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us those people who keep their bonds of kinship i.e. they visit their siblings, they visit their relatives, they visit their uncles and aunts and keep good ties with their family relations. The Prophet said, Nasa Allah fi umurihi. Allah will increase in that person's lifespan and Allah will increase in that person's provision and risk. Now at this particular time when we can't visit our relatives and we can't go to our neighbors and our friends, then we should maintain our bonds of kinship with them by ringing them, by texting them, by speaking to them over the phone because even this will bring about comfort in their hearts and maintain uh, that love and connection with your families. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran, those who are mindful of Allah, those who are Conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah said, وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Such people who are constantly conscious and mindful of Allah, Allah gives them risk and provision from places and at times that didn't even cross their mind. Number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us in the Quran al kareem that we should make dua. Allah said, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ if my servants ask you about me, then inform them, I am close. I respond and reply to the supplication of the one who calls upon me. Which means, if we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will increase in our risk. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have made this dua after Fajr every morning. Allahumma inni as'aluka rizqan tayyiba. Oh Allah, I ask from you for a good, wholesome, healthy and a pure rizq. So to make dua for rizq is actually from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's number four. And number five, the scholars have said that those people who spend from their own wealth, from their own income in charity, give to the poor, give to the needy, give to the destitute, give to the orphan, uh, build something that's needed in society. Those who are charitable in their wealth, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala promises them in the Quran that if they spend, Allah will reimburse them and give back to that person in reward by 10. One of the great scholars of Damascus, Sheikh Salim al-Masuti, he was a very generous man. One day he gave his jubba, his overcoat, away to somebody. And then he came home. And somebody knocked the door and his son went to open the door. And the person delivered a parcel for the Sheikh. And the son looked into the parcel took something from it and then came to the Shaykh. He bought the parcel to his father and it was a load of jubbas, brand new overcoats. The Shaykh first, he started to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He said to his son, there should be ten jubbas here. Where's the tenth one? You've only given me nine. He smiled and he said, Dad, I took one for myself. But how did you know there was going to be 10 if this is a parcel that's come to you? His dad said, because I gave one away in Allah's way and I always know and I have always experienced that when I give one away, Allah gives me 10 in return.